What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week two, season number two here in the SFL series. Week one didn't quite go as planned for your boy here and the Toronto Thunderbirds. Saw that a lot of our subscribers and their teams did get the victory in week one to start off the season one and oh. So good for you, but uh, for me and the Thunderbirds, didn't quite go as planned. It was a fun game, though. Ultimately, we did drop 41-34 against Patrick Mahomes and the Vancouver Huskies. It was a fun back-and-forth contest, and our defense got a lot of uh, answering to do for letting the uh, team put up 41 points against us. That's not winning football, and we know that. But uh, today, we got a chance at redemption as we take on the Montreal Monarchs and two fellow subscriber players on that team, QB Leo Maglizzi and wide receiver Nick Stoyer. Got a lot to dive into today. Cue the intro, man. And real quick, just want to show you guys the Discord server here. If you are not joined and would like to join the official SFL Discord, please use the link in the description below. Discord's pretty good, man. We got lots of cool stuff here. We got the league just kind of showcasing all the teams and the records around. Also got uh, league leaders here as well. So top five in various categories that I highlight. And I do update this week after week. So uh, subscriber players listed in bold here. We can see uh, we got a couple subscribers leading the SFL in passing yards. We got Michael Yakin of the Lumberjacks, Rocky DiBernardo of the Sentinels, and then also Cameron Moore of the Aviators. So great job there. And also rushing touchdowns. Austin Kringle, it's only, you know, week one, so not a lot of stats. Uh, you know, player requests. If you want to request me to do something different with your subscriber player, week one action, showing all the matchups in week one, week two, etc., etc., and then all the different uh, divisions and the subscribers that are on those teams. So, and I will be adding more too. It's, you know, I constantly think up new ideas. So, join the SFL Discord link in the description. Ma makes this series so much more fun and interactive. And with Madden 25 right around the corner, we're going to do the next iteration of SFL and that uh, when that game drops. So you'll definitely want to be locked in and tuned in to the Discord. Take a quick look at the Montreal Monarchs roster. Have not played them yet in the SFL series, so I'm kind of excited. And first things first here, we got Leo McGlizzy. Shout out at Mikalazi Vlogs in the comments. Six foot one, 190 out of LSU. That's kind of funny. We uh, benched and <laughs> lowered the overall ratings of a former LSU quarterback and brought in a new LSU quarterback in Leo. So we're going to have to be taking on him today. He's got good throw power, but great throw on the run. Believe he is a scrambler archetype, which he is. And also he's got 94 speed. So going to definitely have to watch uh, if he escapes the pocket, you know, and tries to tries to do things on his own. Improvise, if you will, could be tough. Damian Pierce and a Zach Charbonnet are the uh, halfbacks, John Lovett, fullback, and then wide receiver. They got T. Higgins as their number one, Mike Williams as their number two, and Nick Stoyer, shout out at Nick Stoyer 1054 in the comments. He is going to be their wide receiver number three. Down to normal dev from star, but I would imagine that's because he didn't really get a whole lot of playing time uh, on the San Juan Tigers. So maybe on a better team like the Monarchs, maybe he can get that dev trait back up to star development. Fuck yeah! Cade Otten and Mo Ali Cox are the tight ends. Getting a look at their offensive line. Really good one on the left side. Teron Armstead, been doing this for a long time. And at a very high level, Lyle Collins, the left guard. So their left side is pretty much good. And Corey Lindsley, former Packer and Ohio State Buckeye. Offensive line looks pretty, pretty deadly. But getting over here to the right side, it kind of cools down a little bit. Jamari Sawyer is the right guard. And well, I guess it's only the right guard position. Everything else on the offensive line is pretty stacked. Miles Murphy is the defensive end on the left side to go along with Cameron Hayward, superstar X Factor. This team looks good. This team looks good. Mozzie Smith, the former Wolverine, and Shy Tuttle are the defensive tackles. Arden Key is the left linebacker. Jermaine Pratt and Josie Jewell are the middle linebackers. And Willie Gay is the right linebacker. Yeah, I am uh, shaking in my little space boots here because the, Mon the Monarchs are good, man. They look really, really good. Trent McDuffie and Steven Nelson, Greedy Williams, who 
he would be good in real life if he could ever just stay healthy. So far, that has not happened in Cleveland. Aloe Gilman is the free safety. Pretty good option there. Harrison Smith, longtime veteran. Got nothing to prove. Been doing it for a long time at a high level. Matthew Wright is the kicker. And then uh, auto-generated guy out of UTEP, Earl Farini is the punter a quick look at our division rivals the melbourne dreadnoughts they are going to look much much different this season as we brought in the subscriber brother duo from the paris black knights per the request of my man uh at Krayton, the dark one in the comments so jaden hayes the qb from the paris black knights is coming over to the melbourne dreadnoughts and also wide receiver caleb hayes and they got three now i went ahead i think their receiver was jalen waddle and bryce young was their quarterback so i just traded him to the black knights brought in the brother subscribers to the dreadnoughts and now the dreadnoughts have a subscriber qb and they also have three subscriber wide receivers they got yeezy fuentes alexander Kleblek, and caleb hayes and we're going to be seeing them two times per year. So cannot wait for the first time that we see the Dreadnoughts. That should be a fun one. Monarchs at Thunderbirds. Subscribers on both teams. This one should be good. And we really need to redeem ourselves for that uh, poor defensive effort that we saw last season. So if you guys are fired up and you are loving this SFL series and want me to see, see uh, or if you want to see me keep it going, I should say, Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, all that fun stuff. Got College Football 25 and Madden 25 right around the corner, so cannot wait. It's going to be content aplenty. But without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Thunderbirds Field and get ready for the game. Opening kick is up and underway, so we are going to get to see quarterback Leo McGlizzy and wide receiver Nick Stoyer first. They're 1-0. Well, we're 0-1. And get a look and see what Leo did last season in his first SFL action. I imagine he did pretty good, seeing as how they got the win. I mean, 249, two touchdowns, one pick. I would say a workmanlike effort, right? He brought his uh, lunch pail, his hard hat to work. He was clocked in and ready to go. But again, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have to be aware that this guy can get outside the pocket and scramble. They're coming out 13 personnel to start. It's going to be a give to Damian Pierce, who has all the daylight in the world. What's going on with our defense? Come on. Can Yaya Diaby catch up to Pierce? He's not going to be able to. So uh, that's a one play touchdown. And where is our defense? Like, we won a freaking Super Bowl last season. And so far, <laughs> looking like we're having a Super Bowl slump as I guess we're going to have to wait to see Leo McGlizzy and also uh, Nick Stoyer. Ah! Going to need a big performance from Jordan Love. He played good last week, 307, three touchdowns, one pick. And as I mentioned, it wasn't our offense was not the problem whatsoever. It was our defense, as we just saw on that last that last play. The defense was the question mark. I do got uh, corner subscriber Jax Vaden in the lineup now. And there's Zay Jones, but that one is going to come back with a hold come on guys did we did we do practice this week like did we prep for this one are we were we out partying too much joe tooney what was going on man were you uh partying with your former former uh quarterback player uh, patrick mahomes and travis kelsey i don't know what the heck is going on there but we just had to move the ball back nine yards and maybe tubby on the draw can get us a little bit of daylight oh just needed a little bit of speed Jermaine Pratt was there to catch up and limit Tubby to only a minor game. Go ahead and motion out uh, tight end there, St. James. Got to see if we can get this RPO game going with Oxmall and maybe not get holds. There's a nice nice catch and a run there by Oxmall for 12, and he's going to make this a very manageable third and three. And I kind of feel like we got to pick this one up already. Like, I mean, it's way too early to say this is a, you know, a must pick up uh, a play. But it just kind of feels that way. We're going to go ahead and streak Olave and just see who can get open. Zay Jones underneath is the option. Thank you so much. Zay Jones has been such a great player for us. He keeps this, uh, I'll say, must-score drive alive. Come out shotgun here on first and 10. Got to watch uh, big Cameron Hayward over there. Need somebody to block for him. Thank you. I mean, Cameron Hayward got blocked, but literally nobody else did as Tubby was only able to pick up one. A little bit more speed, and I think that he would have would have had that one, but unfortunately, that is not really Tubby's game. Uh, but I will tell you what, Chris wow. Olave on this press action, I really like that. 
see what that uh, safety does. Oh, come on. Oh, that's, that's got to be P.I., right? I mean, I guess maybe he was not uh, five yards down the field, but Chris Olave seems like he really like, got held on that one. I mean, he was definitely, maybe it was literally like right at the five-yard line because, you know, you are able to make contact uh, up to five yards. And even with that, though, Steven Nelson kind of draped over him. Chris Olave, Olave, Olave had a chance at it. Now it's going to be third and nine. Another big one. Lots of adversity to start this thing out. We're going to come out TE attack and try to hopefully roll out to the left side. Dare, oh, nope. Oh, man, I got torn between running. I, sh I should have just kept going with Jordan Love, but I saw Darren Waller get open at the very last second there, and I was torn between it. And we got to go. We're going to go screen, man. You, you guys know I like to typically rock with coach suggestions, but this is a situation where I really think, uh, you know, probably – not the best part of the field to be going for on fourth down, but I'm just now scared of the Monarchs and the way that they came out here. So Kareem Hunt should be able to get this with ease. Ooh, yeah, I'll tell you, it wasn't with ease. He did get it just barely. Keeps this drive going. Good job, Kareem Hunt. Balls on the 45, getting close to Monarchs territory. Again, going to put Olave on a streak, maybe he gets open on that seam, but I don't like it. But Zay Jones is open. Okay, heck of a catch. Nice throw there by Love. Fit it right in between the seam. We had two defenders kind of on either side of Zay Jones there. So it was a nice, nice catch and a nice throw from Jordan Love. And now we're kind of moving. I'm going to go back to Oxmall on this RPO, although Chris Olave getting double teamed over there. So that's uh, it's not good. Yeah, that play was kind of doomed from the start but I suppose I will take a pickup of four. Second and six, I do like Tubby on the inside. He had a Maybe. very good game last week with some good blocking. <laughs> Could have. Oh, he fumbled it. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Okay, so Tubby, that's not good, brother. And that was clean, too. Like, yeah, somebody punched it out there. Not quite sure who that was. Maybe it was uh, a, a Loey Gilman or somebody. The safety, not sure. But it was definitely recovered there by Arden Key. And now we're going to get to see Leo McGlizzy. And this is uh, not a great start for us. I mean, it's pretty much going as bad as it possibly can. Obviously, a lot of football left to go. Matt Milano going to get to Leo there. Thank you so much. He's been our defensive MVP ever since he came back, and he is introducing Leo McGlizzy to that freshly manicured turf here at Thunderbirds Field. How's it taste? <gasps> Tell me how's it taste. Maybe I shouldn't be talking crap because usually when I talk crap in this game, uh, the people make me pay, and there's Jax Vaden. Couldn't wrap up, and that's Nick Stoyer. All right. This Monarchs team is tough. I'm getting to see uh, our subscriber, Nick Stoyer, in action for one of the first times in this series. But now I'm kind of worried about that outside run uh, because obviously we've seen Damian Pierce cook us on the first play of the game. So probably going to use her up on Antoine Winfield. It's not going to be a Pierce run. Uh, somebody got a hand on that football. Looks like it was maybe DJ Reed. But uh, finally, now we find ourselves in a favorable situation and i think we're gonna go nickel mid blitz not gonna sit down and just play easy zone coverage we're gonna make him earn it hopefully get a hit or something on mcglizzy and gotta also watch out damian pierce there we go baby it's leonard floyd all right so after the defense got embarrassed on that very first play of the game starting to step up had a really really nice uh night they bailed out tubby in our offense because that fumble that much i'll say Nice defensive stand on that drive. Come on, Tubby. Shake it off. It happens. Everybody gets fumbles now and again. You're still our RB number one. No doubt about it. So nothing to fear there. And you know what? Just to kind of help Tubby's confidence, we're going to go right back to him. And now if you fumble on this drive, <laughs> on this play or this drive, we may be having a different type of co uh, conversation. But as of right now, and okay. All right. All right, Tubby. Okay. Fighting for extra yardage. I like to see it. Not going to play conservative just because you lost the pigskin. I'm going to go screen again. Um, typically, I and I called it, you know, I still will rock with coach suggestions most of the time. But this game is a little weird. And I got to make sure that we, uh, okay, there we go. There we go, Tubby. All right. There we go. There we go. I like to see it. Jordan Love starting out six for eight for 54. 
Tubby with a clutch, clutch conversion. And now I'm going back to coach suggestions. As you can see, so we're going to go I form inside zone again, Tubby. And this time I'm going to run to the left side and maybe spring over Olave here just to kind of be in a better position to block. I see you got a defender there, number 10, right on the outside. Tubby going to cut it up. So far, running lanes aren't there. That's how the last game started, too. And then Tubby did pick it up pretty well in the second half. So maybe that'll be the same type of thing today. Not 100% sure. Let's go draw. Healthy dose of Tubby, you know, and I do like uh, the, the way that this defense is set up here is pretty good. So Tubby should be able to, you would think, have some space on this one. All right, there we go. Not really what I wanted, but a gain of six, I'll take it. Tubby a little slow to get up, too. Uh Third and three, gonna be a little play action roll out here. If I see space to roam with love, oh no, but I see a receiver wide open, that's Zay Jones. I was kind of just looking to take off with love, but I saw Zay Jones butt naked out there. Indecent exposure on the field. And maybe could have thrown it to Tubby too. Uh, that wasn't even actually the most accurate ball from love because uh, Zay Jones had to make a pretty, pretty good adjustment there, but he did. And now we find ourselves in the best field position all game. This will probably be the last play before the first. So let's make it a good one. Looking for uh, probably Waller. Maybe does Love have the speed to roll out? I mean, gain of four. And apparently this won't be the last play before the end of the first. JK, LOLs. It is. Thought the clock would stop there, but no, it's the first quarter. Duh. And dot, you wouldn't be able to tell by the yards. I guess the Monarch 78 rushing yards. That was just really on that one play. But we're doing a good job in yards. And if we can just pick this up here, score, tie the game, you know, we'll be right back into this one. I like the uh, PA little crossers here out of the single back. Probably looking for Zay Jones or maybe my man St. James, the tight end. Just kind of have to see what happens. Oh, Zay is open. This is going to be the Zay Jones show, I think. And he does get in. But I'm telling you, man, this secondary for the Monarchs, like, I'm seeing guys open. Or no, that wasn't a touchdown. Okay, my apologies. Bruh. Let me edit these McDoubles raining down from the screen. Please, Tubby, there we go. You see them. The McDoubles raining down. So you had that fumble earlier, you know, but nice way to shake it off and score. Get some of that confidence back. And most of, oh, oh, Graham Glasgow, no, you're too big to be jumping on people's backs, man. You can't do that. If Tubby gets injured, which he can't because injuries are turned off in this one. But still, we're not going to be having our big 300-pound offensive lineman jumping up on people's backs. Uh, yeah, no, no time for that tomfoolery. But 7-7, new ball game. Our defense looked pretty good on that last drive. Let's see if they can repeat it on this one. I'm sending Heat at McGlizzy again. That seemed to work on the last drive. And also going to press up with our guys, too. Got to watch Damian Pierce. Oh, Leo going to get sacked by Miles Garrett. So, so far... Our defensive line and our secondary, they really, ever since, you know, uh, asterisks next to that first drive of the game, sure. But ever since that time, man, it's like they are a brand new team. And part of it's because I'm really, really locked in on Pierce, I think. Oh, Jax Vaden, number one, thought he might have a chance at an interception there. Good to see him back on the field. Madden was doing some, uh, some screwy stuff with my depth chart. So I had to go back and fix that. And good to see Mr. Vaden out here on the field. And how about the other Vaden, Silas Vaden? How about we can get him, maybe? Didn't get a sack. He was targeting Stoyer, though. Patrick Peterson was in coverage. And our defense has come alive. They must have heard me. Must have heard me chirping in their ear, talking about him a little bit. This might just be the running game. You know, the running game. Maybe this is a, a game where we can really wear him down and have some good, oh, uh, well. As I say that, okay, lanes converge there from Tubby. Tubby's actually having a pretty rough start in terms of yards, you know, yards per carry, and also obviously that fumble. But still a lot of time left, still a lot of time for my man to rebound. And second and 10 here, we're going to go play action. Maybe take a little shot play out of the single back. Who's going to get open? Is that St. James? Come on, baby. Nope. That is a bad, bad pass for me. As Trent McDuffie, I saw, and this is what I was talking about earlier too. Like I did see St. James open there for a second. He had, he had the open, uh, the opening, if you want to call it that. And the Monarchs just like I don't know if they were just kind of like in shell coverage or just kind of, kind of baiting me a little bit. But when I first, I guess I probably should have hit St. James there, which I pretty much did. I mean maybe a split second, but you see, 
a good pass. I mean, he's he's open. Uh, but I let him down. St. James kept going. And Mc, I, Mc, I even tried to use her up on St. James to make him come back to the ball. He got turned into a defender on that one. And that is interception number two for Jordan Love on the season. Let's go pressure again. But like I said earlier, man, I'm really like I still got PTSD from that first play of the game. So I'm kind of like always going to be watching the running game. And there's T Higgins again for his second catch, second completion, second pickup. Leo looking pretty crisp on this one. And Leo starting to settle in now, making some good plays. Uh, this game could easily be advantage Thunderbirds, but unfortunately I can't stop turning the ball over. Yaya Diaby there. There was nobody there guarding the outside. They had uh, Nick Stoyer and somebody else wide open. It was a nice game of four. See what Leo and the squad decides to do here from the 37. Going to use her up on Milano this time and just kind of have him guard the middle of the field. DJ Reed is there, but that is Mike Williams. Not a first down, though. Third inches. So maybe uh, holding them to a field goal would just be astounding. And you got to figure this is probably going to be a give to Pierce. So I'm kind of just going to play that as such. Nope. Oh, man, that was it. We had DJ Reed there, but these receivers, T. Higgins and Mike Williams, they're coming down with some pretty difficult grabs in this one. Let's shift the focus here and just try to play good, solid zone coverage. I really need some pressure from uh, Vaden in this D-line. That would be awesome. Leonard Floyd, though, second sack on McGlizzy. I thought, really, you know, the scrambling type of situations, I thought Leo was going to be carving us up on those. And for the most part, our defense is there, and they've been able to answer the call. So I am happy about that. And Leo now going to come out single back, so i got to watch, of course. Ooh. Brother, ooh. Damian Pierce. Nope, it's a play fake, but there's Miles Garrett. It's about our fourth sack of the game, and we are really making life difficult for Leo. Miles Garrett's got two. Leonard Floyd's got two. I want to say maybe even somebody else has one can't really remember but now we can easily just guess pass shade over top and even probably drop a extra defender out here like miles garrett just to make sure we don't get beat deep there we know mcglizzy can do that but he can't take off there's no way i mean <laughs> wait what i mean i said he couldn't take off because he really couldn't but why like okay this is something that they gotta fix in madden 25 man like, all right, so it's third and forever, right? I get that. But, I mean, right here, like, if you're going to, like, I, okay, we got Jax Vaden, I believe. Yeah, Jax Vaden right there. But, I mean, if you're going to just do this, at least scramble and pick up something to make it an easy, feel, like, a better, easier field goal. Because now they got to punt it. And that is nothing against Leo, you know. that That is just Madden and the EA logic. So, I really hope they address some of that in Madden 25. Uh, because that's like, nobody would do that. Nobody in the NFL would do that. This is a very weird game, 7-7. We got a chance to score and get the ball back after halftime as well. Can I audible this? I don't want read option, though. I don't want read option, maybe inside zone. Yeah, that's what I want because the defense that I see here is looking pretty, pretty sus with only three guys at down linemen. So Tubby should, oh yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about, Tubby. I know that was a long developing play, but obviously it was the right decision. Now will take us to the two minute warning. Coming out spread four wide. This could be Kareem Hunt on the Texas or maybe Mike Oxmo. Oh yeah, baby, it's Kareem. He might even score on this one. He's not gonna score, but gonna get it down to the one yard line. And this is kind of like that picture perfect drive that I was talking about. A lot of time gonna come off of the clock here. Gotta make sure we snap this. But obviously, time is not a factor with those two timeouts. Can Tubby get in? Bang! All right. So, much, much better showing from the T-Birds. We're going to go up 14-7, to pending the extra point with only 11 seconds to go. And we get the ball back after halftime. And hats off to our defense because, aside from that one play to Damian Pierce, they have really been showing up in this one. Yeah, that's right. Clap it up, Coach Sanders, especially for our defense. We're going to go into the locker room up 14-7 to seven and definitely dominating in the passing yards and really the rushing yards for the Monarchs. You figure it would be sky high. Ever since that big rip by Damian Pierce, haven't really seen too much. And getting a look at some of the games here, some of the action, 
across the SFL. Lots of subscribers now, you know, around the league. Austin Kringle from the Bulls got the win over the Nighthawks, 18 for 70 and a touchdown. And Derek Daragosa on the Nighthawks played pretty good, but it was not enough. And we'll take a look at the Oakland Wizards here. They are winning against the River Hogs. And I am Al Musa with eight attempts, 91 yards, and a touchdown. Holy cow. And uh, Elks and Caps, no subscribers on that team. I don't think. I got to remember. Maybe the Caps. I feel like the Caps have somebody. I'll have to go back and check. Starting to, you know, kind of trying to learn this uh, <laughs> season number two here of the SFL. And don't show me that, man. I don't want to see that. That nonsense. Get that tomfoolery off of the screen. <laughs> Start mesh concept here uh, coming out of the locker room. Probably going to be a heavy dose of the run game, but we're only up by seven, so it's not like it's a route or anything like that. So we still got to be semi-aggressive, and there is... Ooh, look at Oxmall. All that for only a gain of five, but it was, a, it was a not an easy catch, and I still stand by what I said earlier, that this Monarchs team... I mean, they are looking, uh, they are very good, you know, defensively at least. And they are not making life easy for us. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We're going to, oh, why did I audible that? No, I didn't mean to do that. I want to put, uh, yeah, let's put Oxmo on a streak and maybe have uh, Olave as well. Oh, that's a pick. That's a pick. Oh, God. Uh, that was 100% not the right read for me at all. And third and five, really want to pick this one up. Uh, Darren Waller. That's, how, how is that not P.I.? And Jermaine Pratt bumped me. I mean, Waller was going to get open for sure. And Jermaine Pratt bumped me. Uh, I don't have the penalties or anything like that turned off. So we're going to get to see Jack Mavros. Not a good drive coming out of the locker room. Nice boot, though. I did turn the pump power up. So nice boot there from, uh, from Jack Mavros. And Delonte Allen, the corner, going to return it. But that was not a good drive from us. Let's see what Leo McGlizzy, Nick Stoyer, and these Monarchs have in store mm -hmm. for their first drive of the second half. And uh, this time, McGlizzy going to come out in the pistol. Where's he going to go? We know he can scramble. Yeah, first time seeing that. Oh, man, gashed us for 22. Okay, Leo. And kind of getting a little chirpy, getting a little chippy there with DJ Reed. We had nobody there. Uh, Jordan Poyer had to come down from his safety position just to limit Leo and the Monarchs to a gain of 20. Yeah, I think uh, let's put a spy out there on the field now because now all it takes is one play like that to get you a little bit a little bit scared and a little bit rattled. So McGlizzy going to come out single back. We'll see if he gives it to Pierce. He is. And defense still, you know, 84 yards for Pierce, but about 80 of that or 75 of that, right, was on one play. So they've really buckled down, and now I'm just going to try to play good zone coverage here. Going to guess pass, going to shade inside, going to use her up on Leonard Floyd. It's going to be Damian Pierce on the inside. <gasps> Matt Milano. Oh, two broken tackles. Come on, man. No, no, no. Can DJ Reed? All right. So Damian Pierce was like, yeah, screw this. Screw these little two, three yard pickups. I'm going to go back and do what I did earlier. And, but in, in our defense, though, that should not have happened. Two broken tackles, inexcusable. Need you to clean things up, Thunderbirds. Zero wide receivers, though. I love when teams come out in the set because I go to my little 60 out jacks blitz. See if it's a little uh, fullback dive here from John Lovett or somebody. No, it's actually going to be a pass and a sack. And that is Leonard Floyd, 2.5 sacks. Not sure who... The other uh, accomplice was on that one, but we've got about, what, what six sacks or something on McGlizzy. Got to watch this uh, left side here. I'm going to use her up on Milano, and it's going to be a fake. And there's the catch from Mike Williams, but Matt Milano is right there to stop him, limit him to a small gain. That was actually Ali. My apologies. And now they're going back to zero wide receivers. Holding them to a field goal would just be such a big W. So come on, show me a fullback dive, something up the gut, and let's shut this thing down, please. It's not going to be. That's going to be, oh, but good defense. And who was out there in coverage? Yeah, yeah, Diaby. Silas Vaden had the pressure. W for the defense. Got to watch the fake, though. And please do not, um, don't even try to block this. We're not going to run into the kicker here. We're going to go ahead and let uh, Matthew Wright kick it. I will certainly take it as we still have Decent lead of four. Gotta, gotta pick this up here. So we're going to go play action only because I like Zay Jones and St. James on their routes on this one. But got to get the ball off, though. Come Why are you the way that you are?
honestly. Ponze, please no. That is going to be interception number two from Jordan Love, and it's Trent McDuffie interception number two from him. I saw the pressure coming, so I didn't even necessarily look at Zay Jones on his route. Uh, I just knew where he's probably going to end up being there, you know, on the field. But interception number two, interception number three total for Jordan Love. So, you know, remember, I had 19 of them puppies last season. So I'm always good for that. And that's going to be a play fake. Yep. Obviously, we got Leonard Floyd running. Someone's got to crash on Leo. Good defense there. Good reaction. Hoping for a pick from McGlizzy, but that was not going to happen. I mean, do we just go like screens and RPOs and draws and, you know, say stuff like that whenever we get back on offense? I mean, that's going to be a score. Probably no. It's Kate Otten. And Leo only at 9 for 14 for 99. I was hoping they were coming out uh, zero wide receivers. And you know what? We're sending the house. It's it's either going to be a, the best, best decision ever or it's going to come back to bite us. And it's... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, whatever. It was a good run from Damian Pierce. But the Monarchs have the lead. They shouldn't. They should not. It's 100% me and my interception throwing, having ass self. And uh, we're only down by three, though. But look, we have got to, got to, got to stop turning the ball over and find the freaking end zone. Will the RPOs finally work? We got Zay Jones here, so nobody's really guarding him too much. Yeah, okay, that's what I needed to see, and a nice block by Olave, finally. Those RPOs are usually our bread and butter, but the Monarchs, they must have been watching a lot of tape, right? Watching a lot of film, because they haven't really been hitting so far in this one. And I am going to, hopefully... I made running it outside our focus. I'm not really. There we go. Okay, good shift by the line. I like that. Got to ID up a uh, proper guy as the mic. But can Tubby maybe get the outside run going? That would be lovely. That was a pretty good block there by Waller. Wish he would have, or Logan Thomas rather. Wish he would have held it for a little bit longer though as a gain of three results. Okay, coach is saying screen to Tubby and that's what I'm going to do again. These, you know, deep shots and stuff like that, not really working for us in this one. So, got to just kind of go with uh, the safe stuff, I feel like. And Tubby, oh, he's getting, look at the big uh, big defensive lineman there, Mozzie Smith. Yo! Puffing and puffing, doing everything besides blowing our freaking house down. Tubby picking up a nice first. I'm going to have Kareem Hunt block. Um, Zay Jones, though, he could be really, kind of want to, kind of want to just audible him to a streak. I mean, I feel like it could be a quick step drop, and nobody's really there. Come on, bang! Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's the Jordan Love-led offense and the Thunderbirds-led offense that we like to see, and we reclaim the lead. Uh, gonna need our defense to do some of those things that they did in the first half, however, and now I'm kind of scared of Damian Pierce again. Like, I was scared, I was scared of him at first, then we started to clue in on him, and shut him down, and I was feeling confident, and then he had that one burst on the last, uh, what was it, the last possession or the one before that, I don't remember, but now I'm kind of scared of him again, but at least we're back, you know, in the lead, where we belong, need a good defensive stand now, and I will feel very confident about this one. Hold on to your freaking britches, grab your popcorn, take your mobile device, wherever it is you're going, because we are in store for what I think will be an exciting, exciting, and tense fourth quarter. Leo's got a fullback out here now, and so we're going to use her up on Poyer for sure, and it's going to be, oh god, this is what I'm scared of. Come on, someone get to Damian Pierce, please. God almighty, Jax Vaden is there, but that's now 161. And we had, there were so many defenders in the box. Like, there's no way that Damian Pierce, I mean, look at that. Like, there's, there's people everywhere, and we got people just Star Fox barrel rolling, jumping, rolling, falling down, like, Come on, guys. This is what we practice week in and week out. I'm going to need to see some intensity from our defense. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's get those sacks flowing just like we were in the first half. Of course, you can't get a sack when all the quarterback's doing is throwing passes, but that time, okay. That was Ali there, and uh, Leo McGlizzy found him, but it was actually for a loss of two. Credit on the tackle to Silas Vaden. And uh, they're in field goal range. It would be a kind of a long one, I suppose. So as long as we don't get, you know, beat deep, something crazy like that, we're going to actually not take our foot off the gas here, man. It's going to be uh, press with the blitz. I'm going to use her up on Winfield. Come on, Damian Pierce, stay in the block. Thank mm -hmm. you. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess we forgot to cover Mike Williams, which you can't do that. 
You cannot do that. Yeah, coach is saying RPO. I love it. Um, and really, you know, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, maybe this is actually – could be a – can I get an inside zone? Yeah. I like the defense here that the I, – I know we made running it outside our focus, but I just like the defense here. Hopefully, Tubby can – do something good. I mean, okay. Gain of four, I'll take it. Chris Olave, too. Perhaps we should be looking at him. Coach called this play last time. It resulted in a pick. So hoping for a you know, better result there. Zay Jones is open. Come on, hang on to that. Wow. I am just, I'm very impressed with the secondary of the Monarchs. Because, like, I know I've said this, like, three times. But I just can't, I can't get over it. It's like, you think that you got somebody wide open. And they're pretty much right there, you know, to converge. And our, you know, Zay Jones and the, and the boys, they're doing a good job of hanging on to some of these passes. But now we're going to try to go outside. We made it. Oh, God, Cameron Hayward. Yeah. He just ate up whoever it was that was attempting to block him. <laughs> that was a loss of three. Okay. Chris Olave now getting pressure or oppressed on the outside. That's going to be my first look. Also, maybe have Walt. Yep. Come on, Olave. You got. What was that, Jordan? That was a terrible, terrible pass. Yeah, I don't like this at all, guys. Um, Olave puts you on a curl. Maybe Zay Jones gets open, but um, let's just go. Come on, Olave, please hang. Oh. He had a shot. He had a shot. And yeah, our receivers, I just just got done saying that they're making some, some tough grabs. And what happens? We had a chance to get a first down. Chris Olave drops it. What a boot by Jack Mavros, too. Going to be a touchback, but that was a nice boot. And, boy, what are they going to do on this drive here? I mean, if they find the end zone, punch it in, it's going to make life very, very tough for us. I would imagine they're probably going to be, you know, looking to kind of get the, the ground game, ground attack established. But, of course, as I say that, they're going past, and it's going to be an outside completion of Stoyer. Subscriber on subscriber tackle as Jax Vaden was there to limit him to a gain of five. All right, guys, going to be, again, watching uh, Damian Pierce. It's not going to be Pierce. Oh, this is our shot. Come on, Winfield, or DJ Reed, rather. Would have loved to get an interception there. It was not to be. But still, uh, that makes it a third and five. I'm going to bring a little bit of pressure in here. May not be the uh, best you know, decision in the world, but we're going to do it anyways. And then just hopefully, hopefully we really need. Nope. We're going to get burned there. It's Nick Stoyer. Wow. Good play by the Monarchs. They're starting to uh, really put the pressure on us in this one here, guys. Now, surely this one's going to be a run here. So I'm going to use her up on Poyer. And, yeah, it's going to be Pierce on the outside. Come on, Poyer. Make a good tackle. Thank you. All right. Third and eight. This is quite possibly the biggest, biggest play so far in this game. Not going to go press, though, because that hasn't really worked for us too well. They've been carving us up on press. So just got to gotta play good. Lockdown zone coverage here. And oh, somebody kill me, please. And maybe. Oh, come on, someone. Leo. Come on, man. So now the MO on this drive is just limit them to a field goal because that clock now, I said it wasn't a factor a few moments ago, and that puppy's a factor now, and we really just got to now try to limit them to a field goal. There is Kate Otten on the outside picking up five. I mean, there's no way this is a pass, right? Surely this has to be Damian Pierce on the right. It's going to be a pass. What are they doing? Come on, Jax. Yes, Jax Vaden. Perfect timing user pick. I need a pick six. Come on. Come on. Oh. Jax freaking Vaden. You, sir, are my BFF for right now. That was so clutch. Would have loved it to be a pick six, but you know what? That's fine. Because now, we look at that, man. Boom. Right in front of T. Higgins, their number one wide receiver. What a clutch, clutch interception indeed. I am going to be super conservative right now with the screens, the RPOs, stuff like that, because we just got to score. And if we can get rid of some of this clock, we are going to be... Oh, God, got to get that pass off, though. <sighs> Almost wish Kareem Hunt wouldn't have caught that as he gets drilled for a loss of two. And we roll out and possibly find Darren Waller here. No, we're just going to take off with uh, Jordan Love. There's no reason not to. It's going to take us to a two-minute warning. Great play there. And look, the coach has uh, the exact same idea as me. Screen pass to Tubby. We're getting – we have Justin Tucker too. So worst-case scenario, 
We get into, uh, oh, God, dude. Mike Oxmall, though. He's pretty much wide open. Nope. I'm not going to let the uh, the devil tempt me there. Maybe I should have, as they had that screen red from the get-go. I want... I, God, I cannot throw a pick on this one, though, man. We cannot, cannot throw a pick. We're pretty much in field goal range. Oh, Olave is getting pressed, too. I mean, that might be the move. I know. Uh, how do you go away from that, though? How do you go away from that? I'll tell you how you go away from that because you got... Oh, God, hold on to the ball. My God, dude. What is going on with our receivers? Oh, dude, that's like at least four four times that they dropped it on a first down. And I got to be quiet here. Yes, we got Justin Tucker, but this is going to be a long field goal. Got the slow down kick arc, though, so that is good. We're going to tie things up, but man, dude, like four times that I can think of to where a receiver of ours dropped it on a potential first down situation. And now we got to make sure that we don't allow the Monarchs to go down there and score because they still got a minute left. Boy, it's a stressful, stressful start to uh, season number two here at the SFL, man. I mean, it's, you know, it's good. It's fun and everything. But God, dude, it is it is stressful. And got to watch Damian Pierce. Of course, he's been the guy. Jax Vaden, maybe interception number two. It's going to be Nick Stoyer, and he's going to get leveled after a pickup of five. Second and five here. Eyes still on Damian Pierce, as they should be. It's K. Dotton wide open. Maybe uh, could we get a turnover or something? That would be good. No, and they're already close to Matthew Wright field goal range as well. They've been getting out of bounds, too, so they have not had to use, like, a timeout or anything like that. And I just kind of feel like we, ha as much as this is probably – could come back to bite me. We're going to probably need like some pressure, stuff like that. Damian Pierce, please stay into block. Please stay into block. He did not. It's Kate Otten. They're going to call a timeout, and they're not quite in field goal range yet, but I'll tell you, they are very, very close. And unless we get uh, like a big sack or something like that, just not feeling confident about this one. Leo coming out empty, though, and where is he going to go? Come on, got to get that sack on him. Somebody crash on Leo. Silas Vaden, or Jax Vaden, rather. Another subscriber on subscriber tackle. 23 seconds. They only got uh, one timeout as well. So we got a chance here. It's slim. I'm not feeling great about it, but a chance nonetheless. And Leo, come on, Jax. Get him. Get Kate Otten. Thank you. I think he stayed in bounds too, did he? This is everything, man. Right now, I don't think they're in field goal range. But if they pick up a nice play here, they probably will be. It's going to be Pierce. Can we stop him? Thank you. And they are in field goal range, but it's going to be, and they're going to go for it too. It's going to be a long one. I'm not sure. Matthew Wright is not uh, that great. They're going to call a timeout, so ice themselves, I guess. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and ice them right back. All right, yeah, make them think about this here. I don't think Matthew Wright's that good. And if he misses this, we should be heading to OT 24-24. Joe Burrow uh, demoted from starting quarterback to it's a placeholder, but uh, yeah, okay, they're ice. That's good, but we cannot run into this kicker here, man, so I'm not even going to attempt a block. It's too risky. Is Matthew Wright going to drill it? He most certainly is. Wow. Walk off field goal by the Monarchs, 27 to 24, and it just comes down to those dropped passes. Yes, I threw a couple picks. Yes, we had a fumble from Tubby, so turnovers were a problem, but there was a couple times where we could have converted on third down. And our receivers just dropped it. So Leo McGlizzy and Nick Stoyer are going to get the W. Uh, heck of an interception by Jax Vaden there. If he could have got a pick six on that one, that could have uh, drastically changed the outcome. But, you know, both quarterbacks didn't really play great. Jordan Love got to cut down on the picks. 248, one touchdown, two picks. Leo McGlizzy, 210, a touchdown and a pick as well. And looking at the running game here, it, Damian Pierce, That this was the real story. Yeah. He ate us up. Tubby could never really get it going. And also Leo McGlizzy, four for 48, averaging 12 yards per carry. Uh, taking a look at the receivers, Zay Jones, nine for 144. But I believe he was the one that dropped that third down completion. Mike Williams played good. Otten, Mike Oxmoor went five for 38. Nick Stoyer, four for 49. Uh, Kareem and Tubby got it going there on the uh, like the screen Screen action, so that was good to see. Defensively, we started, I mean, really, our defense played good. I cannot fault them. You know, Leonard Floyd, 
Uh, Miles Garrett, Silas Vaden had a TFL and a half a sack and one tackle as well, aside from that. Um, also, where is our other subscriber players here? Jax Vaden. He had one interception. That was a big one, too. Big one indeed. And where was, uh, do we have any stats for our other D tackle? Jay Mongstro, it doesn't look like it. So, but yeah, defense played good. They were not the issue in this one. It was me and the turnovers and the lack of third down completions. So defense played good, but ultimately we go 0-2. So I got to turn things around. But let's get a look at all of our subscriber stats here in week number two. Oilers Nation gets the win over our division rival, the Austin Lumberjacks. So if nothing else, that is good to see. And quarterback subscriber duel here. We had Lucas Thomas, 274, two touchdowns and no interceptions. And then Michael Yakin, who was in top five in passing yards this season so far, 210, one touchdown and one pick. So he definitely, definitely cooled off as well. And we look at a uh, subscriber running back, Darian Woolcott here, 10 for 28. 2.8 average yards per carry, so not a great game from him. Lucas Thomas did have some uh, scrambling yards, 7 for 26, and but also a fumble, too. Receiving Noah Fant got it going, uh, Pat Fryermuth, too. Floyd Butler, 5 for 57, and also, uh, where's Kyrie Brooks? Did Kyrie Brooks, he did not have any catches or anything like that, and he's definitely on the depth chart, too, so maybe, I guess, just didn't get targeted for whatever reason, not sure. But a pretty good, solid game there from uh, from Floyd Butler. And we get a look at the defensive stats here. Subscriber Thomas Francisco, the safety. Eight tackles and a nice pass deflection as well. Yeah, yeah, Monarchs and Thunderbirds, we know about that. The Oakland Wizards got three subscribers on that team. They get a big win over the Memphis River Hogs. And I saw in a halftime here, yeah, I am Al Musa. Welcome back. He had a rough, rough week one, but rebounded nicely with 18 122 and a touchdown as well so that's awesome to see for him and then we got a couple subscriber defenders here on the wizards we have c ben who had five tackles no uh you know game wrecking plays like touchdowns or, or um, interceptions or picks and michael briner only one tackle but must have been enough because the wizards did get a nice w bison's cool down the condors as the condors had a great start to the sfl season mason buchanan a very very solid game 283 and three touchdowns as well so you love to uh to see that and the condors they got a subscriber wide receiver Braden keys who for the second week in a row i believe no targets and he's i went through and looked at the depth chart too made sure it was uh you know accurate for all teams he's in there so I'm not sure necessarily what's going on and they probably could have used him because uh yeah they they <laughs> They needed some points in this one. Eli Sokowitz, though, the subscriber safety, four tackles. Also, four tackles from Mike Collins and a pass deflection as well. San Juan Tigers get back in the win column. I believe uh, they might be 2-0. Oh. I'm not 100% sure, but they still have their lone subscriber here, uh, which would be Mr. King Love. So we'll take a look at the stats of him. Four tackles, no picks, no, no uh, sacks or forced fumbles. But still, a nice W for Love and the Tigers. Voyagers continue their dominance as they uh, eke out a nice victory here against the Dublin Shamrocks. And of course, subscribers on both sides of the ball. Good game for Jesse Buzo, though. 295 and two touchdowns. Of course, you know, when you're playing Lamar Jackson, it's always, always tough to win. But hey, there's a great performance by Buzo. Uh, he should feel proud about that. Running game for the Voyagers. We have Mac Hayward, 16 for 59 and a touchdown. And also Austin Gutierrez. He got some snaps in there as well, which is always good to see. He went three for 13. And taking a look at the receiving game here, Tyler Lockett. Wow. Eight for 180. Not a subscriber, of course, but I mean, you cannot fault uh, the effort there. Uku Tree Rat, nice to see him getting some snaps and some production. He went seven for 74, which is uh, wasn't enough. Could have used... Uh, touchdown or something uh but still a good performance and then cornerback ty royal smoochie wallace he had three tackles and also a nice tackle for loss too orlando orbits get the victory over the dreadnoughts which again that is good for us because we're starting out zero and two we need our uh you know division rivals to lose and Jaden hayes first time in a dreadnoughts uniform play pretty good 249 one touchdown and one interception but it was Kyler Murray with three touchdowns and no interceptions. That is 
what ultimately uh, ultimately did it. And a pretty good game from Johnny Waters, not in terms of yards per carry, but 21 for 69. He was a workhorse and also had a touchdown in there as well. So pretty good to see there. And the question is, though, our receivers on the Dreadnoughts, how did they perform? They all got good production. So Alexander Kloblek, 5 for 66 and a touchdown. Caleb Hayes now on this team, 3 for 46. And also Yeezy Fuentes, 3 for 40. Going to be very exciting when we finally get to play the Dreadnoughts in uh, some SFL action. San Diego Aviators back in the win column. They lost their opening, uh, opening game in week one of the SFL. They were able to barely edge the Albuquerque Armadillos, which is good for them. And subscriber QB here, Cameron Moore, went 293, three touchdowns and one pick. So I believe he is probably uh, still top five right in the SFL in terms of passing yards. Aiden Leslie went 10 for 46, 4.6 yards per carry. Definitely would have liked to have a, a touchdown in there, something like that. That would have been very, very good. And also, wait a minute, we got uh, Nico Petey too. He went, he had the touchdown. Okay, four for 18 for Nico Petey and he got a touchdown. So that's good to see for Nico. Mike Evans went off, man. Eight for 114, that's, uh, that's awesome for him. Jaden Taylor, though, seven for 52, no touchdowns. And Bjorn Jeffrey, two for 17, but he did have a touchdown. So that's pretty good for him. And defensively, we got uh, subscribers all over the place here. So let's kind of go down the list. Arturo Esquivel had five tackles and one TFL, which is awesome for him. And next on the docket, who do we got next? Not Oreo, the defensive end. He had three tackles and a tackle for loss as well. Dior Love had three tackles himself. So uh, pretty good defensive stats from our subscribers. Don't think there's anybody else on here that I can recall. So that will uh, do it for the Aviators and the Armadillo stats. Portland Steamers get the win over the Honolulu Dragons. We got James Briner and Zachary Nolan on this team. So uh, Brock Purdy is going to take his first L of the season. They had a week, week one victory. And James Reiner, two for 15 and a touchdown. Even though they got the, took the L in this one, nice to see my man getting in the, getting in the end zone and getting some stats on his good old stat sheet. And then we got Zachary Nolan, the middle linebacker. He had three tackles, no sacks or picks. And unfortunately, the Dragons kind of could have used them in this one. Sacramento Sentinels, a little revenge for us as uh, Patrick Mahomes and the Huskies Suffered the L in this one, and Rocky DiBernardo, the quarterback, he continues to play great. 296 and two touchdowns, and it's never easy when you go head-to-head -head with Patrick Mahomes and come out as the victor. Anchorage Snowhawks, though, they drop to the Louisville Desperados, unfortunate for them. And we will check on our uh, cornerback and halfback. Got to learn and so much different moves now. I got my Discord pulled up, which is why you see me keep looking over here. But I got to remember where everybody's at here. Halfback Justin Shepard. He went 14 for 56. Average four yards per carry, but uh, no touchdowns, which Snowhawks desperately, desperately needed in that one. And we take a look at Mason Smith, our corner. We'll see what he was able to do in this one. He had only one tackle. Uh, and again, could have used a big play like a pick as the Snowhawks did suffer defeat in this one. Rio de Janeiro Redwoods put up a 30 bomb on the Virginia Beach Blues. So we'll take a look at Lionel Moore, the QB. Wow, 298 and three touchdowns. Outdueled the likes of Josh Allen, which uh, you would think that would be not easy. But in this SFL universe, Josh Allen doesn't play very good. So it's actually not that hard to outduel him. And uh, free safety Flash Parker here had six tackles. So good to see him all over the field and a nice win by the Redwoods. And the St. Louis Bulls beat the Nighthawks. So shout out to, if you're a subscriber and you beat a team in the AFC East to help me out, thank you because looks like we're gonna need it this season. But Derek Derek goes to 218, two touchdowns and also a pick as well. So uh, could have could have done a little bit more there. Definitely could have used some extra help. And then Austin Kringle, we saw at halftime, 24 attempts, 74 yards and one touchdown as well so shout out to all the subscribers in the sfl if you would like to join pin comment down below it's not too late we're still going to keep going with this series until madden 25 comes out but uh, we're owing two guys so we got to get our life figured out and got to come away we got some tough tough opponents coming up here lots of subscribers aviators snowhawks and brooklyn nighthawks so strap up uh, buckle your seatbelt. we're in for a wild ride got to find our first dub of the season but that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.